in this lesson, we want to talk about the remainder theorem. All right, so when you talk about the remainder theorem, it's basically just a shortcut for evaluating a function at a given value. So let me start out with this easier example, and then I'll explain what's going on. So we have something like f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 12. And we want to start by asking, what is f of 3? So we know what this notation is. We've been working with functions forever. We know that this is just asking for us to plug in a 3 for each occurrence of x and find out what is the value of the function when that happens. So what is f of 3? I'm just going to plug in a 3 here and here and here. And so I would have what? 3 cubed is 27, and then plus 3 squared is 9, and then minus 5 times 3 is 15, and then minus 12. So this would give us what? 27 plus 9 is 36. 36 minus 15 is 21, and 21 minus 12 is 9. Okay, so this result here, we already know how to do this by plugging in. But there's another way that you can do this, and it comes from this remainder theorem. So let me go to a fresh sheet real quick. And I want to rewrite my polynomial. So we have f of x is equal to, we have our x cubed, and then we have our plus x squared, and then we have our minus 5x, and then we have minus 12. Okay, so with synthetic division that we talked about earlier in the course, you can take a polynomial like this, and you can divide it by a polynomial of the form x minus k. So remember, we had something like x minus k as our divisor where the coefficient of x is 1, and it's raised to the first power. So it's got to be of this form. So this guy right here, when we talk about the remainder theorem, is what we're going to be plugging in for x in our function. In our example, we used 3. So for this guy, we would be dividing by x minus 3. So let me put this as the divisor. So let's just say g of x is equal to x minus 3 as an example. So if I do f of x divided by g of x, what would that look like? Well, I could do a polynomial long division, or again, because it's in this format, I can do a synthetic division, which is quicker. I just grab whatever this is, okay, and I put it over here in the top left, and then I want to put kind of a division symbol, or you can use whatever symbol you want, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to grab just the coefficients from this dividend here. So this is a 1, this is a 1, this is a negative 5, and this is a negative 12. Now, you've got to make sure that these are in order, okay, in terms of the degree. So it's x cubed, x squared, x to the first power. You've got to make sure it's lined up that way. And if you're missing a power of x, you put a zero as a placeholder, okay, it's very important. So I'm going to take my 1 here and write it in, and then I've got a 1, I've got a negative 5, and I've got a negative 12. So I want to do the synthetic division here, and the idea is that when I do the synthetic division, my remainder is going to be 9, because that's what I found when I plugged a 3 in for x in my f of x earlier. We saw that already. So to do the synthetic division, I'm going to drop this down, and then I'm going to go through, again, we're going to multiply, then add, multiply, then add, so on and so forth. So we say 3 times 1 is 3, then we add, 1 plus 3 is 4. Then we say 3 times 4 is 12, then we add, negative 5 plus 12 is 7. Then we multiply, 3 times 7 is 21, and then we add negative 12 plus 21 is 9. So remember how this answer works. This guy right here, this leftmost position, is the coefficient for x raised to a power that is one degree less than this kind of polynomial that you're working with here as your dividend. So this guy has a degree of 3, right? That's the highest power. So this guy will have a degree of 2. So this is basically going to be an answer of x squared plus 4x plus 7, and then your remainder is 9. So typically we'd say plus 9 over the divisor, which was x minus 3, okay? So let me erase this already. We don't need this anymore. We already see that we got the same answer here, but I want to explain where this comes from. So let me kind of drag this up. And before we get into this, I want to just break this down as simply as I can. So I want to use an example first from just whole numbers. So when you were in elementary school, you did something like this. So 7 divided by, let's say, 3. So we know this result would not be just a whole number, right? 7 divided by 3 would be 2 with a remainder of 1, okay? And we know that we could write this as 2 and 1 third, or we could punch it up on a calculator and we get a decimal form. But that's not important. We know the remainder is 1, so let's write it that way. Now, what we can do is we have this guy right here, which is the dividend. We have this guy right here, which is the divisor. 
we have this guy right here, which is the quotient. We have this guy, which is the remainder. So if I take the quotient, which is two, and I multiply it by the divisor, which is three, and I add the remainder to that result, I will get back my dividend. Two times three is six, six plus one is seven, okay? So it's very important you understand that process with whole numbers before we do this with polynomials because, again, once you understand it in its most simplest form, you can apply it to something that's more complicated. We're going to do the same thing here. So this guy right here is my divisor, okay? So I have x minus 3, and then I multiply by the quotient, which is this part right here, okay? So the quotient is x squared plus 4x plus 7, okay? Then I add my remainder to that. In this case, that's 9, okay? So that's my remainder. So you have your divisor, you have your quotient, and you have your remainder. So it's the same thing that we looked at with the whole numbers a second ago. Now, you can pause the video and you can see that if you go through and simplify here, you will get this back exactly, okay? But I also want you to notice that if you plugged in a 3, in this case, what would you get? Well, if I plugged in a 3, well, what happens is because I have the minus 3 there, okay, 3 minus 3 would be 0, and 0 times this, whatever it is, x squared plus 4x plus 7, doesn't matter. I know I'm plugging in a 3, but forget about that for a second. 0 times this would just be 0. So this is gone. This is 0. So I'd have 0 plus 9, which is 9. Okay? Again, that's exactly what we found from plugging a 3 in for x here and also through the synthetic division. So that's why this works. To get a more general view, something you'll see in your textbook, they'll write this out and say, okay, we have f of x, and this is equal to, we'll have x minus k, which is your divisor, okay, times q of x, which is your quotient, plus r, which is your remainder. Again, if I want to find f of k, well, if I'm plugging in a k there, k minus k is 0, 0 times whatever this is is 0, so I'm just left with my remainder r. So this is why this works, okay? If you want to find f of some number, well, then you can just do synthetic division, okay? So let's look at some more examples. And so for this one, we have f of x equals negative 5x to the fourth power plus 15x cubed minus 11x squared plus 6x minus 15. We want to find f of 2. And again, you could plug a 2 in there and do it that way, but this is going to be a bit quicker. So I'm going to put 2 here, and I'm going to set this up. So I'm just going to grab my coefficients, so negative 5, 15, you've got negative 11, you've got 6, and you've got negative 15. Okay, so let me put a bar down here. I'm going to drop my first number, and we're ready to roll. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 15 plus negative 10 is positive 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 11 plus 10 is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 6 plus negative 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7. So you just take this remainder, forget about everything else, and you say f of 2 is just negative 7. All right, let's go ahead and look at another one. So we have f of x equals negative 3x to the fourth power plus 9x cubed plus 4x plus 3. We want to find f of 3. Now, this is very important, okay? People forget this all the time and they get the wrong answer. So if you're missing a power of x, so I started with the fourth power, then I have cubed, I don't have a squared, okay? Got to write a 0 in as a placeholder, so pay attention. So I want to put something like 3, and then I'm going to put negative 3, 9. I'm going to put 0 here as a placeholder because I don't have an x squared. Then I'm going to put 4, and then I'm going to put 3. So negative 3, 9, 0 because I'm missing x squared, 4, and then 3. Okay? So make sure you do that, otherwise you will not get the right answer. All right, let's drop this down. So we have negative 3 here. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 9 plus negative 9 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 4 plus 0 is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 12 is 15, okay? So my remainder here is 15, so f of 3 is 15. So you might also get some examples with complex numbers. These are more tedious, so typically you see a degree of 2, maybe a degree of 3 if your teacher is, you know, wanting you to spend some time on it. This is no more difficult, but you do need to understand how to work with complex numbers. We've already seen this earlier in the course, so I'm confident that you can get through this. So suppose we had f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. We want to find f of 2 plus i, okay? So again, you just set this up the same way. So you put 2 plus i over here. Grab your coefficients. So you have a 1, you have a negative 2, and a negative 3. So let me scroll down. We're going to need some room for this. So let's drop this down here. 
So if I had two plus i times one, I would have two plus i. So here's where it gets a little tricky. So you need to add these two numbers. So let's say we have negative two plus you have this two plus i. So you're just going to add the real parts. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So I'm left with just i. Okay, so this is just going to be a result of i. So now what I have is multiplication. So 2 plus i times i. So I'll just do i on front times 2 plus i. So i times 2 is 2i. Two and then plus i times i is i squared. Now, remember by definition, i squared is negative 1. So we're just going to write minus 1 here. Okay, and I'm going to flip the order because that's the way you write it. So negative 1 and then plus my 2i. Okay, so let me put this up here. So negative 1 plus 2i. Now, my last step is to add, and what I'm going to have is negative 3, and then we have plus this negative 1 plus 2i. Again, add the real parts. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4, and then this plus 2i would come along for the ride. So this is my remainder, this negative 4 plus 2i. So that would be my f of 2 plus i. All right, so let's talk about a related concept here. And to get an idea of what's going on, let's just start with something simple like, let's say f of x equals, let's just do x squared minus 9. So we already know that when we work with functions, if I replace f of x with, let's say, y, and I replace y with 0, what am I doing here? I'm finding the x-intercept, right? The x-intercept occurs when y is set equal to 0. We already know that. So I'm solving for x. This is where we would cross through the x-axis, okay? So to solve this is very easy, right? So I would say 0 is equal to, I'm going to factor this into x plus 3 times x minus 3. We know this is the difference of squares. We know this is x equals 3 and negative 3, okay? We already know that. But basically what I want you to understand is that if I go back to this in its f of x form, so let's say we have f of x, now, if I plugged in a 3 there or a negative 3 for x, the result would be 0, right? So if I said, what is f of 3? Well, this is 0. What is f of negative 3? Well, this is also 0. So if I plug something in for x and I get a result of 0 for the function's value, meaning I've found the x-intercept, we call this a 0, a root, a solution. There's a lot of different names for it, but I'm just going to stick to calling it a 0 for now. So if we plug something in for x in our function, and it gives us a zero as a result, we call this a zero. We'll talk more about this in the next lesson. All right, so let's just look at one example of this. It's a very easy concept. So we have f of x equals x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus 25x minus 12. We're asking, is 3 a zero? In other words, would the point 3 comma 0 be on the graph of this function? Would it be an x-intercept? One of them. So what we would do is just use synthetic division to see if this is true or not. So we put a three here, and then we set this up as we normally do. So we'd have a one, we'd have a negative four, we'd have another negative four, we'd have a 25, and then we'd have a negative 12. Okay, drop this down, and then we can get started. So I have a one here, and three times one is three. Negative four plus three is going to be negative one. Then three times negative one is negative three. Negative four plus negative three is negative seven. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. 25 plus negative 21 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So there's no remainder here. So yes, we can say that 3 is a 0 or a solution or a root for this function.